And man, we're happy to see you. How you doing? Great, guys. How are you? Good to see you guys. So, yeah. JC just hit the nail on the head a minute ago. You're going. You got to call some ball plays tonight for Hammond. Uh, but you're going. But you're teeing off here in just a little while. Where'd you learn that from? Oh, you know, <laughs> it may may have been a guy or you know that I've <laughs> known for a long time. But, uh, yeah, I, I play. I try to play on Fridays now. I, I uh, um, you know, I've been doing it all year, and 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 look forward to today. You know, for a lot of reasons. You know, the veteran. You guys mentioned the Veterans Day. You know, my dad was a veteran. Uh, you know, we lost him in April and, and he used to love coming to the Gamecock games because we always did a great job and the university always did a great job of, of recognizing those guys. And it seemed like we had a home game, you know, this weekend more times than not uh, in the seven years I was there. And my dad always loved that game, you know, when it was at home and, and uh, you know, it was always a, a, a good weekend and he was a very proud vet, uh, army vet. And uh, uh, this was always a special weekend for him. So, uh, uh, we miss him, and uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a, this is a great weekend uh, to all those out there that have have served, and uh, yeah. you know I look I look forward to this weekend myself every year. Yeah, it's one of my. It should be a holiday every day, but um, but it's certainly one of my favorite holidays. It, it takes it take great pride, coach, and uh, just whenever you see a veteran, I love I love saying thank you to him. Uh, yeah, it means absolutely. means something to me, man. I, so I hope other people will do that. Um, all right, we we got a we got a lot of lot of stuff to to get to. First and foremost, uh, but you know we'll get to the Gamecocks and all that just a little bit. I'm really anxious to get your thoughts on some of that. But did you get to spend any time with the HBC last weekend when he came up? You know, I did not. Uh, we we had a get. You know, we had the first round of the playoffs last Friday, and that the event, the actual uh, official event, ended at nine o'clock, um, and that was about. And I, I was. Coach Wheeler, John Wheels, who, who was a GA on the 09 team, you know, at South Carolina. And that's where we, our relationship goes back. Um, he said, you want the ball first? And I said, yeah, let's take the ball first so we can try to get a running clock in the second half. I got a reunion to try to get to. And um, we had the ball five times in the first half and, and we're 34 nothing and a half. We got the running clock, but I didn't get to the thing in time. So I text Connor um, and, and, and Steven and Seth and, you know, all the guys that were that were around and, and um, said, where are we going? And we had kind of had it preset. And um, so we all went to Columbia Craft and uh, DeMarco and, and yeah. Chaz and Byron McKnight. And, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. A bunch of them came down there. It was great. It was uh, it was me and about 25 of the guys. And, and uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, pretty much all the quarterbacks um, were there. Um, with the exception of, uh, you know, Perry, Perry was not there. Um, they had a game that night as well. Um, and, and so, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. It was, um, it was a special night. It was good to see a bunch of those guys that I haven't gotten to see. Um, you know, I stay in touch with a lot of them, especially the quarterbacks, but, uh, it was, uh, it was great to be, you know, kind of felt like the meeting room again with me, Seth, Connor and, and Steven and, and, um, you know, telling, telling old stories, Dylan, I guess Dylan was the only one not there and he's, you know, obviously working, um, and, and he could not get, get back for at least the Friday evening. And then I was playing in a member guest with my brother-in-law down at Chichesse. So I didn't go to the game on, on Saturday and, and had to, uh, stayed in that, in town that night, hung out with the guys and then got up at the crack and went back to Beaufort and, um, so it was a it was a great weekend, and uh, hopefully, you know, we all discussed it. Just let's let's not make it, uh, you know, ten or twelve years uh, before we all get back together again. It's something we ought to be doing more often and, and celebrate those years because it was a special time in all of our lives. The most special time, even though Coach Spurrier wouldn't, he would not stand out there on that field and say. He, he kept he kept bringing the '69 team into it. You know, he just could he he couldn't do it. He, um, he can't let go of not winning the SEC. I mean, yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Every single yeah. talk about South Carolina now, and and look, it was a function of scheduling. I mean, because some of those teams, like all right, I watched Georgia play Bama in '12, and they had Bama beat. And last time I checked, South Carolina beat the crap out of that Georgia team. So, yeah. so there could have been, you know, it could have happened. It was just scheduling. And then, of course, the three collapses in 14. I don't know if 14 would have matched up pretty well with Bama at all. 
but um, yeah, you know. yeah, it would have been interesting. And, and you can sit around, and, you know, hell, we can all sit around and <laughs> what it could have. Uh, yeah, you know, if a frog had wings, he'd bump his ass when he jumped lily pad to lily pad. But at the end of the day, it was uh, it was a heck of a lot of fun. And 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 but for me, it was the, the those relationships. It, we had we had a special bunch. That locker room was uh, was a, a bunch of special kids and special people special coaches you know it's it was uh we talked about brad you know brad wasn't there and 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 uh you know we miss we miss brad and, and uh but but all those guys it was it was a it was a, a a funky group of a bunch of different personalities that all managed to to get along and and have a lot of respect for each other and uh it's it's the way it's supposed to be it's the way that it's not right now. It's it, in this lunatic fringe we call college football today. It, it was just, you know, you go back to those 2012, you know, again, it's just 10, 11, 12 years ago. And, um, and those, those guys were special and it was, and it was still, you know, the game of why we all got into the coaching profession and, and, and played the game ourselves. And, and uh, we had a lot of talks about that and about where it is today. And, and uh, you know, we'd, we'd all love to, to rewind it, but uh uh, all we can do is share those memories of a lifetime and get together as often as we can. How how is it different for you now, or is it at all when when you you talk to them as peers and friends versus as coach and player? Um, you know that's I think that's the special thing, and anybody that's you know I I, I hate to call them outsiders, but you know people that aren't in the business um, and 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 or and or didn't play. Everybody that played understands what the locker room's all about. And, you know, I go back with with just my relationships with Coach Spurrier, you know, and, and, and having played for him, uh, our relationship was was one. And then uh, he gave me my first full time job as a, as a grad, graduate assistant at Florida. Uh, and, and the relationship was was different than it was as a player and, and got to know. And then, uh, you know, coming here to South Carolina and working for him and, and, and the relationship just continued to grow and be able to play golf and, and drink a beer with your coach. You know, you don't do that when you're a player. Um, you, 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 you have that respect and it's that coach player relationship. And I, and I, I'm a big believer in that, that it's, you know, we're not, we're not buddies at that time, but the, the specialness of it is that there's still that connection. And, and, and as you go, you know, through life and, and hopefully all of us live a full life and we get to spend much more time together, that relationship continues to grow and, and you do become friends. And it's, uh, that's the, that's the part of it that I, that I, that I love and, 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 and will always want to stay around it because the locker room is what it's all about for me. I, I don't, I, again, I just speak for myself. I don't, I don't care about everybody else's opinions and why they do it. And I do it for the locker room. I do it for the kids. And, and that's right now at Hammond high school, it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. being back around kids. And it kind of reminds me of 10 years ago at South Carolina, the kids are still, they want to develop, they play for the love of the game. Um, there's a respect between coaches and players and a great culture. And, um, and it's, uh, hell I'm having a ball. Well, and, so Hammond, so you're going to go beat up on Perry again tonight because uh, you <laughs> well, got to teach him I, another I lesson, right? Um, I tell you what, they've got a lot of uh, explosive kids on their team. Um, yeah, we had a heck of a game. You know, the first go around, we ran the ball for oh, I don't know, 350 yards or something. Had opening drive, we went 20 plays and had the ball for nine minutes and kept them off the field, and that's kind of 20 plays. Game. Yeah, 20 plays. We got two fourth downs and. And ended up punching it in uh, a couple of quarterback sneaks, and and uh, but it was it was a, a heck of a game, and and those guys, you know, Corey and and uh, and and Perry, obviously, we go way back together, and and mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's fun watching them. They've done a great job there at Cardinal Newman, and and uh, you know we look forward to uh, to playing them again tonight in the semifinals, and 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 seeing seeing how it goes. So we're hosting them at home tonight at seven thirty. It'll be a lot of fun. A lot of Gamecocks in that ballpark tonight between those two schools. That's going to be neat. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I told Perry last night, I said, you, you got to – I texted him and said, you know, I got Mangus on tomorrow, so you want me to you want me to say anything to him? You want me to talk some trash? He said, nah, he already beat my ass one time. I don't need him to do it a second. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he must have forgot about last year at Heathwood. It's actually been twice. <laughs> Keep the score, man. Yeah, you, it's, it's, hard, score. It's, hard, it's hard to beat the guy. Um, well, moving, moving on here to South Carolina, I, I, you know, one of the things when I, when I texted with you yesterday, coach that I, I'm sure JC, this is probably on your agenda too, that I really 
wanted to pick your brain on is is the offensive line and you know Carolina this week is going to start their more than likely uh 10th different offensive line in 10 games I don't even know if I've ever seen that before um and Dow Dow Loggins is the OC there we didn't bring you on to question Dow Loggins I'm asking you how sure. difficult it is to to call plays when every week those five guys how they're so important and you don't ever know who's going to be out there I and mean, if they are out there you don't know where they're going to be what what is that like man <laughs> well you know I, I i know dow a little bit we we clinic uh together in nashville um in uh, back in years ago uh at, at the clint national clinic and and uh had met a few times when he was there with the titans and i was at middle tennessee state and and um, so we've we've kind of crossed paths and, and talked ball, and he does he knows what he's doing. He does a good job, and um, yeah. anybody that's that's called plays uh, like we have for for many years, you know, you you offensive lines come and go, and and, and um, you know, I, I coached the position at one point back in early in my career, and um, it, it, those guys are the best. It, it, but it's also you know I call it I kid with them. That's the last train to Clarksville. You know, once you have a D lineman gets thrown over there, he's the, you know, that means he wasn't good enough to play D line. They all end up at the O line and, and they're, they're great guys. And it's a unique fraternity in that O line. And a lot of teams, you know, there's very few teams that sit there and are happy with their left tackle all the way to right tackle in, in pro football. There's not 32 O line coaches that say they got an all pro at all five spots. You just don't. Um, you know, how many six foot five, six foot six? Uh, really good athletes are running around the planet, much less play that play football. So it's it's uh, it's it's tough. And and the camaraderie, what makes it great, is when you have those five and they become cohesive and they play all the time. In the years that that we've had our best offenses, we have guys in Hammond High School right now. I got five seniors on the scene on the O line. They've all grown up in Hammond. They've all been there for a long time and they've played. And those guys have played together, played next to each other, in basically the same positions for four years. And um, and and the, our our O lines back at South Carolina in the in the good years, you know, we had we were we were big, we were athletic, and we predominantly stayed healthy um, with TJ and AJ and Corey and uh, you know Brandon and I mean you just you know Matulis, we just we had the same guys that that predominantly stayed healthy all and all, and that that that's key. And anybody calling plays um, when you don't have to change and 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 have an, I don't know that I've ever heard of ten combinations through what and what is this week 10 this um, week 10 man know, i i don't know if i've ever heard of that, that that's insane yeah. um you know they're they're young i've watched it a little bit i was at the florida game um and uh, uh you know and, and and watched you know when i've had time to watch and it's uh you know they're they're, they're young and, and and need playing time and that's a position of, of if there's ever a place for development and it's tough to play when you're young that's the spot especially in this league and uh, there's just very few, very few freshmen. Have you ever seen, um, you know, young people, young getting their first snaps in the SEC that have a lot of success? It's just tough. Yeah, I, I, I've never, I, I couldn't imagine what it's like for a lot of those guys. I mean, Dowell trying to figure out what to do. I mean, like, how does that affect you when you when you're calling plays? If you, you got a guy like Spencer Rattler, you know what he's capable of. I mean, the guy mm -hmm. can make every throw on the feet and do everything, but. But but at times, you know, you probably have to do you. It's probably hard for him as an OC to have to pull the reins back from time to time just because it it, well, it ain't it, gonna work. It, it is, but it's also the same. Like no, no different than like when Connor first came to South Carolina. You know, we 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 rolled out more. We sprinted out a little bit more. We moved the pocket uh, more because you know he was six foot. Um, he was getting used to the development stage of being more of a drop back passer, which he didn't do a ton in high school, very little actually. And so we kind of fit it. So, uh, and Dow knows that he, he, you have to do it constantly depending on your personnel. So, um, you know, you, you, you can't make excuses when you're an OC. We, we all know that we've all been in those situations where you have to do dial back or change. It's, I don't want to say change, you adapt. Um, and that's where having the ability to know a bunch of different offenses and different ways to do things is 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 very key because you never know who's going to get hurt. You never know who you're going to recruit. Uh, you may have one guy that runs the ball better than he passes it. May have a guy passes it better than runs it. Um, you have a guy get hurt. You got to adjust. And, and we've all been there where we try to hide one guy 
or maybe two guys in the O line, and you have to help them. And you got to call plays where maybe you get double teams in the run game. You got to make sure you get two double teams, especially with that guy who may be a little bit uh, a inexperienced, light in the ass, what, what, whatever you, you know, what, whatever the deficiency is. You got to adapt, and and you've got to do it. You just can't, you know. You still got to go out there and play on Saturday. And, and, and so he knows that, I mean, hell in the NFL, you only carry eight linemen. You know, when I was coach XFL, we had the same thing, same roster, you know, you only carry eight guys. Well, if a guy gets hurt, guess what? You know, you, you, you better, you better call the plays accordingly. You chip, if it's a tackle, you've got to chip with your backs more in the pass game. Um, you, you know, if it's a guard, you, you may want to get the tackle to help him or the center to help that guard more in the pass game. Uh, if there's a, but we all do that based on, yeah, I remember we used to play Clemson, Grady Jarrett, who just got hurt. Um, hell of a player. I mean, back when they had Daquan and all those guys at Clemson, I, I used to tell all my Clemson buddies here, they'd go, coach, what do you think? And I said, man, I'm worried about that Jarrett kid, something else. I didn't worry about those ends. Hell, we just zone read those guys and hell, they never did anything. Um, <laughs> and we, we never worried about them. And, and when, when we, when we were beating their ass, we never worried about those guys, but I tell you yeah. what, I worried about Grady all the time. And we had yeah. to get two bodies on him in the run game. We had to make sure we had two bodies on him. So you, 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 you have to adjust and you game plan for guys, um, on defense. And sometimes you got a game plan for maybe a deficiency you got on offense. And that's just, that's, that's the job. That's what you got to do. It's not easy. Um, and it's, um, it, it can change week to week. What do you, what do you, when you watch Xavier Leggett, I mean, you, you coach some pretty good guys that played the wide receiver position too. Mm -hmm. You kind of know what that looks like when you see Xavier Leggett, what do you see? A big fast guy that's coming into his own, figuring it out. You know, um, I think that's what, you know, again, so much has been lost and there's so much that the, the world, you know, I, I hate to go bring up all, but everything right. You got to have it right now. Yeah. And I, and I see it got, you know, where everybody says, well, where has he been? How come we haven't gotten him the ball and all this? Well, sometimes it just takes sometimes for the light bulb to go off, right. On different guys and everybody's different. There's some people are late bloomers. Some people are ready right away. And I just think he's coming into his own, and it's fun to see. Um, I think I think Coach Step does a great job with the wide receivers. Um, I, I I I I like the heck out of him, and and have gotten to know him, um, and those guys, you know, through I've known those guys for years, uh, and 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 getting to know more through the years. Um, they do a great job, and I think they're, and in talking, you know, they're developers. They like to develop. That's why I coach. I like to. To develop, I like to see a Dylan Thompson come in as a freshman and and throw skip balls as a, as a curl and, and couldn't even throw a curl route with, to the, to his left without skipping it and become you know the single season all time leading passer as a, to to see a kid develop and work hard. That's that's what the reward is, um, and I think you're seeing that with with Leggett right now and he's 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 worked, um, he's developed, um, he's had good coaching. In, in my opinion. And, um, and now you're seeing the fruits of all that labor on both sides. And it's, um, I think he's got, I think the sky's the limit with him because I don't think he's hit the ceiling either. And those guys we had back, you know, you never want to get a guy at 18 that's already hit a ceiling. That's no, that's no fun. Um, they're as good as they're ever going to be. Um, and, and, and so I, 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 I see all the Harbor. I mean, I, he's raw and, and look at him. I mean, he, you're talking about a ceiling that's high and, and I just think that there's nothing but, but good things for those guys in the future. Yeah, take us back. To, you mentioned Dylan. This is a good good thing. I, I've always been curious about this. So you, you played Vandy. Connor gets hurt. Uh, it's a war up there in Nashville. Yep. I was in the stands. <laughs> uh, yep. Dylan looked not. I, I would say less than stellar when he was in. Uh, yep. You know, and then Connor had to come back in. Marcus had the big run. You escape. Well, we don't hear from Dylan until November. And, and then it's kind of a hush hush thing, and all of a sudden he's starting. And I remember getting a text like right before kickoff. Oh my gosh, Dylan Thompson's starting, and he goes out and, and just lights Clemson on fire. And then through the winning touchdown pass and the Outback Bowl, and that set the stage for him to be what he was as a senior. Mm -hmm. What did you see through the course of that season that, that that allowed the light to come on that much between Vandy and and Clemson? Uh, confidence. I, I think he, that's when he finally believed in himself, uh, that he could, that he could do it when he was early. He was a very non-confident, 
Um, I think I don't, and, and I don't want to say he was, he didn't believe at all. I just, he wasn't ready to believe and, and he, he, he was, uh, he was hesitant and he was, and he was learning. I mean, he, you know, he was a really good athlete and, and a lot of people don't realize he was a little better athlete than he ever got credit for. Um, you know, was, a, was a good basketball player and, and, uh, you know, had size 15 shoe. I thought he was going to be a much bigger kid than he ended up becoming. Not that he was little by any stretch, but, um, I thought he was going to, you know, possibly could even grow into a tight end, um, you know, down the road if it didn't work out, but he, he worked and you could see in practice, you know, and that's where it all happens, right? It, it, in practice, when we go to one-on-ones, he would start to check. And he, he would, he would change in one-on-ones if I, if I had given him something, a route, and then he'd change the route based on, and you could see that confidence building and, and recognize uh, things. Then you still have to go play though. And, and, and in the Vanderbilt game, you're right. No, it was borderline bad. Um, and, uh, and, and fortunately, um, you know, Connor was well enough to get back in the game Um and, uh, and, and, and finished it off because at that time he wasn't ready. Well, but that little bit of experience and then you when things go bad, you know, uh, I don't know if you've seen that good video about, you know, good, you know, when all you do is answer good. Everybody gives you something, you know, golly, that was a terrible read. Good. You know, the answer is always good because something good is going to come of everything. Um, I believe that. Uh, and and I think it happened with Connor. I mean, uh, yeah. he learned a ton um, and then put it to work in practice the next couple of weeks. And then, you know, Connor, you know, obviously got hurt, hurt that foot. And uh, um, that was one of my favorite wins probably ever. Um, and, uh, up up there. and that performance was uh, was tremendous. And the one play that stands out to me that showed where his growth was and, and that he it was was down there in the red zone when he threw the back shoulder to uh, uh, Bruce. Oh, uh, yeah. Down in their end zone. And, and it was a play. It was a. It was a, a Deacon, um, uh, you know, lefty play, and and you know if it's if it's one high, he had to play where he played. Uh, if it's if it's four, they're they're press. You know, Kevin loved the four press, and and if we got the press, we were going to play the Deacon side. And he went back and and sh- in his eyes, and he looked, he saw them close the middle, and I mean immediately with no hesitation, turned, took a quick hitch, and ripped that back shoulder straight ball uh, to. And I was, I, I I think that's when we gave the low five out there about the hash. I probably should have got a penalty thrown on me, but it was uh, <laughs> that was that's when you that that's why you coach. You know, that's the kind of stuff that. Uh, when you see a kid just that light bulb go off and make a play, and I'm like, that's an NFL throw, son. That 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 was incredible, um, and and a and a whole hell of a lot of fun. Well, you t- I just looked at that picture the other day. I, th- I believe that was five, wasn't it? Wasn't that the five picture um, in the yep. locker room with with me and all the QBs and 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 holding the uh, the trophy in there? That was uh, with, with with Dylan, you know, doing that, and 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 what a great teammate. I mean, that was again going back to the, our first conversation. That's the epitome of the locker room we had back in those days. Uh, I know we got to get you out of here. Uh, I, I can't let you go though without talk, all this quarterback talk. Asking you about Spencer, um, you, you mm-hmm. talking about making all the throws and this, that, and the other. I mean, I, you hear all the draft projections. We'll see. We'll see how it all works out for him. I got a feeling it's probably going to be a little bit higher than some people think it is here in early November. But man, when you watch him play, uh, number one, how much would you've wanted to coach a guy with his ability, and and how much have you seen him grow since he's been on campus in Columbia? Oh, a lot. You know, he's. I mean, when it when it's going A to B and coming out of his hand, I mean, he's an elite passer and has been. I've watched him from afar. I got to meet him this summer. Um, talked to him at a we had like a little golf tournament up in Cobblestone um, back over the summer and, and got a chance to meet him and talk with him a bit uh, before we teed off and. Um, you know, I, I just think he's, uh, I, I think he's, he's grown and, and, and shown now that, you know, because again, he's been under a lot of pressure, um, and, and he's done more with his feet. I always kind of thought he was a little, you know, that he was athletic. I mean, if you go back and watch him in Oklahoma and, 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 you know, he can run around a little better than, than people give him credit for too. Um, you know, he's not that big, so I, you know, you don't want him out there carrying it eight or 10 time with design quarterback runs, um, necessarily, but, um, boy, it comes out of his hand good. And I think under the circumstances, uh, there's no doubt he's, I think staying in school for another year has been a good thing. 
Um, I think that I think he uh, I hope some other guys across the country that are in that process of whether they think they should come out or not, maybe take a look at that because there's no doubt he's developed um, staying another year. And and he's definitely made himself, um, you know, a higher uh, draft status, in my opinion. Um, and uh, and I, I wish him nothing but the best in the future. But um, he is uh, he is definitely an elite passer. He's got a really good group of receivers uh, when they're all healthy to, th- to throw to. And uh, uh, if you just give him a, just a hair of time, uh, he's he can do a lot with that arm. That's for sure. It's fun to watch. Coach, hit him straight. I'm glad we got to catch up with you. Uh, I know that the holiday season is right around the corner, so hopefully you, you'll enjoy that. We'd love to get you back. You're one of our favorite favorites around here. You know that, and I know you're one of the favorites oh, yeah. of all the all the audience. They're always clamoring for you to, you know, they want you around more often. Yeah, you know hey, I mean? hey so, anytime. You guys call got, me, man. Much yeah. love, brothers. Yes, man, sir. Hey, 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 go, get, go get Perry tonight now. Hang 60 on him. Oh, uh, wait. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Hit him right. straight, buddy. See you. Nice there you go. GA Mangus, uh, former offensive court. Well, he'll always be an offensive coordinator. The man. Of the game he's Cox. the man. I think it's safe of, to say he's the man. That's the, yeah. 